to deny a geographic base to these people and stop them from attacking us here in America. Mr. Burridge. Well, this war in Iraq has is, is caused quite a controversy, and there are many people that disagree with the war and said we shouldn't have gone in, in there in the first place. I feel that we're there, and we should be responsible and accountable for what's going on there right now. I do think that the civilian leadership with regard to the war has failed the American people and has failed our troops. Donald Rumsfeld has consistently pushed for lower troop levels, and I disagree with that theory. I'm an advocate of the PAL doctrine, which says that if you're going to have a conflict, you need to invade with overwhelming force and have a clear exit strategy. This civilian leadership has been engaged in turf battles and ideology that's irrational. It's time for us to get new civilian leadership in the Pentagon and to get someone to listen to the military professionals. The worst thing that you can do is give a soldier a mission and then not give them the means to fulfill it. Additionally, we need to take care of our veterans when they come home. My opponent has been ranked by several veterans groups with bad marks. He got a 0% rating from the disability veterans group and also C- from the Iraq and Afghan Afghanistan's war veterans. I'll stand up for our veterans. I want to get an A and I want to get a good rating protecting our soldiers when they get home. The one thing that's pretty hard to deny is that support for the war has declined over the last few years. How do you continue to prosecute a war that is becoming increasingly unpopular? Well, I, it, it becomes unpopular and, and the president needs to use that as a stimulus to, to do better at what he's doing. Nobody, not many people in America really want to cut and, and leave Iraq. They know that we're in, in danger. Uh, and so we need to continue and then the president just has to take the hits uh, during that period of time. Uh, this, let me just respond to one thing Mr. Bird said. All the major veterans groups rate me very, very high. I've supported every single vet program uh, that uh, has come to Congress since I've been there. And we've done wonderful things as Republicans in a Republican Congress for vets. And uh, there, there should not be any complaints about how we've treated our veterans and how I particularly have supported our veterans. Mr. Burridge? Quite frankly, the veterans groups disagree with Mr. Cannon. He voted against the TRICARE bill, or at least opposed it, that was going to extend benefits to our National Guard and, and their families. And I, I, I think that's wrong. I come from a family of, of National Guard members. My dad was a command sergeant major in the Utah National Guard. And he's not telling the truth when it comes to his record with the way people are, 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 are uh, reflecting his votes. He's getting negative ratings. He's not supporting our veterans. And to say otherwise is not true. Representative Cannon, what's the most important vote you cast with regard to veterans' benefits? And Mr. Burridge, how would you uh, handle these issues differently if you were to be elected to Congress? Representative Cannon? Thank you. Uh, we have had a series of votes increasing the funding for, for health care for veterans uh, who are um, uh, retired now. We've, we've done an enormous amount. We've, almost, we've doubled the funding for, for health care for veterans. And in every way, we've improved the program so that when I first got elected, vets were all upset. Today, they are happy with the care they're getting and where they're getting their care and how they're getting their care. And it is, it is unfair, and I, I think I'm professional here to, to, to accuse me in broad terms, when my record is very clear and uh, there are marginal groups out there. I, I don't even know about these groups. The main groups are all very supportive of the many things I've done for veterans. The groups are verifiable, and the record stands clear, and you can look it up. These, right, these groups do give them bad markings. You know, I, I was talking to a colonel out of Camp Williams a few months ago, and he was telling about his problem recruiting people into the National Guard. Because if you join the National Guard right now, you are going to go to Iraq. And the difference between the recruiters for the regular Army and those in the National Guard, they have health benefits. Those in the National Guard do not. I would vote to extend health benefits to members of the National Guard they're putting their lives on the line like everybody else. We need to support our National Guard. We have one of the highest numbers of National Guard deployed in Iraq. It's a good thing for Utah, and I would vote for that in Congress. Thank you. Mr. Wright? Thank you. Uh, in the third congressional, uh, congressional district in Utah, arguably the most conservative place in America, uh, are there any meaningful differences between political parties? And if so, what are they, and how do you fit into that picture? That's first to Mr. Burridge. There's a lot of meaningful differences. The, those that are controlling the government right now are waging a war on the middle class. They've, attacked, uh, they've attempted to attack Social Security by privatizing it, which would have $2 trillion in turnover costs and not allow our children to have a, a meaningful Social Security. They've waged the a war on the middle class by passing this prescription drug bill 
that doesn't allow free competition and is very problematic when it comes to its cost because it was written by the pharmaceutical lobby. They've waged an assault on the middle class by passing NAFTA and CAFTA, which has resulted in 30 million American jobs from being lost. I will fight for the middle class. I will fight for those that are in the, the lower 80 percent of, of, of earnings. And I'll stop these tax windfalls that are giving to the top millionaires in this country. We need to have a strong middle class in this country. It's a national security issue. It's better for everybody's quality of life. And that's what makes our civilization great, the strong middle class. And that needs to be done through right policies in the Congress. Representative Cannon. Uh, thank you, Mr. Wright. That's a great question. In fact, this has been one of the most interesting campaigns I've ever run because it's the first time I've actually had a person express the views of the Democratic Party when they run in this district. And that's remarkably refreshing. I, I appreciate Mr. Burge for that. If you take what he just said, we are polar opposites. He would mandate a strong middle class. He'd, he'd legislate a strong middle class. You can't do that. What Republicans believe is in creating the rules whereby people can create value and create wealth and create jobs for other people. We want to have a, a country of rules, of laws, where people can operate, and, and, and then if they commit crimes, you correct them. But if, they, if they're making, creating wealth, we let them go. And that has been far more productive for America, far more productive than the idea of, of regulation and control and, and minimum wages and insurance mandates uh, that, that who knows what, what, what uh, employers are going to go out of business if you shove employer and mandates down them. And this class warfare. You know, you would, a family of four that earns $50,000 a year is going to lose $2,000 if we get rid of the tax cuts. I think that's wrong. He, Mr. Wright asked a very interesting question about the importance of two-party politics and the competition that it can create and the choices it can provide to voters. Now, Mr. Burridge, what exactly can you do to reinvigorate democratic politics in the 3rd Congressional District and the state of Utah? And Representative Cannon, what responsibility do you bear as a member of the majority party to make sure that two-party competition in the state stays invigorated, or at least becomes invigorated? I would say study the candidates and not necessarily the, the parties or the, the national ideology, because at the end of the day, you need somebody that's going to represent you. I would tell the voters to vote in your economic interest. In my district, the median income is $47,000 a year. The policies that my opponent advocates for are for the top 1%. We need to have somebody that's going to work for working class families instead of mandating consolidation of wealth in the hands of a few by consolidation of our media and consolidation of all types of industry and pushing out those that want to become wealthy. It's, it's anti-competitive. It's anti-free market. We need somebody that's going to help middle class and small businesses be able to become prosperous, and that is through the principles of what I'm advocating. Okay. You know, Mr. Patterson, that I've advocated a strong Democratic Party for a very long time. I have never suggested that I need to go out and, and uh, promote Democratic candidates. But the debate with Democrats is vitally important. I, I think that the policies that Mr. Burge is espousing on their face are clearly not the kinds of things we want to do here in my district and in Utah generally. So what I've encouraged are people, moderate Democrats, to come forward and propose ideas that are free market oriented that will, will help eliminate some of the, the obstacles uh, for success in America and, and help America move on. There's nothing wrong with being a Democrat. I encourage people to be Democrats, especially if they don't like what Republicans think. But they ought to know what Republicans and Democrats think first. And they ought to realize that within the parties, you have extreme groups and that, that you need to identify not only with a party, but with an ideology and where that ideology ought to go. But aren't there institutional positions that both candidates could take that would reinvigorate a party system in the state of Utah? Redistricting, for example. Isn't it better to draw competitive districts as opposed to single party districts? I agree. I mean, what, at the end of the day, it's better for democracy, it's better for our communities for there to be competitive districts. And I'm an advocate of having an independent commission draw our boundaries so there's not partisan politics going on at the legislature. What happened to uh, Congressman Jim Matheson a few years ago is a prime example of that. We need to have an independent commission to have competitive districts. Because when you have competitive districts, you have discourse, you have dialogue, and you have choice. And that's good for democracy, that's good for constituent services, and it's good for accountability. Representative Cannon? A great question. The fact is, uh, Jim Matheson has refused to endorse the all democratic, or the mostly democratic district that the, uh, uh, the, the governor came up with for the very reason that he doesn't want to have to run against uh, harsh Democrats who will push him uh, uh, to, the, to the left. And so if you look at his district, it is the most Republican.